I'll try to put uh, a major problem that Europe has to face for the next years, which is um, uh, that we have to adjust our codes and our uh, planning mentality to sustainability ideas. But this is good for, uh, let's say, new projects. And then that we have to deal with um, a big uh, number, maybe 70% of existing structures, that we have to do something because they are rapidly uh, aging and uh, they are not uh, safe enough to today's ideas. So this is more or less uh, what I'll try to, to show with this um, in my presentation. I will not uh, read, of course. I'll come through to uh, what I have prepared. So how, how do I change um, this? Okay. So uh, my presentation is um, will be will focus to uh, a rather forgotten, I would say, but it's not so innocent uh, aspect of sustainability of buildings that is safety, structural safety, and integrity. And uh, although a lot of um, literature is, uh, let's say. Um, uh, every day on the um, on the web or on the uh, newspapers about uh, sustainability, uh, they are rather uh, focused on energy efficiency and uh, environmental aspects, and uh, they um, uh, do not. I mean, on the public opinion, do not include what I would say the first step of sustainability, which should be uh, structural safety and integrity. So this uh, is uh, uh, what. Uh, we are trying to do as a, a European Council of Civil Engineers, and of course it is uh, uh, in the interest of our profession and of course to the public safety, because our, our profession is oriented to serve uh, public uh, safety um, criteria. So a uh, new generation of Eurocodes will we'll try to enlarge our v, uh, point of view about sustainability and uh, what I would like to remind, it's that it's nothing uh, new, really, that what I will try to do. Uh, you see, it was the, the three uh, virtues of um, the construction, even from Vitruvio's uh, years. Uh, firmitas was the first virtue that uh, a building and or a structure had to fulfill, which is to be safe for its use. Uh, sustainable structural design is a rather new, um, let's say, uh, um, idea. Uh, as you know, from time to time we used to adopt some words, keywords, and sustainability is everywhere now in the, let's say, the um, community or the Mandarin language of Europe. Uh, you, everything has to be sustainable, but for the moment uh, the, the point is not put on the structural aspect of sustainability. Uh, there is uh, an effort now that the new generation of Eurocodes will include sustainability criteria. And uh, as you know, um, we have to adjust to a new idea of sustainable cities because now we have to raise the bar from what we expect when we build from our built environment. And uh, as people are g gathered in masses to big cities, uh, these problems are now uh, getting bigger and bigger, and um, we have to um, try to make uh, a more uh, what we call more sustainable design uh, oriented design. Uh, even uh, we have already in the construction products regulation of the community we have one additional uh, let's say essential requir requirement which uh, refers to sustainability. This is. Uh, already uh, incorporated in uh, uh, our di directives, that the construction works must be designed, built, and demolished in such a way that the use of natural resources is sustainable and in particular ensure the following, the reuse or recyclability, durability, and use of environmentally com compatible raw and secondary material in the construction works. This is al already applies. So the basic aspects of the, what we call sustainable structural design will be 
Design optimization, which means minimizing the need of maintenance, is orientated to life cycle of the construction. Reduction of the construction and demolition waste. Design for flexibility, as we design for long uh, lifespan, and we, it is very probable that we have a lot of change of use to this um, uh, construction during its life. Durability of materials. Robustness, which means that it should uh, be uh, capable to withstand uh, uh, some uh, unforeseen events with not disproportionate loss. Resilience, which is the new uh, idea and the new key word for onwards, which is the uh, capability to adapt to and easily recover from hazard, design from the construction, reuse, etc. This, all of this will be incorporated in the new generation of Eurocodes, which is under um, uh, elaboration now. We have from 2010 a mandate to send to, pro to proceed to the development of new standards and new parts of existing standards and try to incorporate new performance requirements and design methods. The mandate 515 is dealing especially with assessment and retrofitting of existing structures. And this is uh, really um, one, uh, let's say, chapter for civil engineers, which will be, um, we have to be uh, uh, very um, used to, to use because we have to do, let's say, 50% uh, of our job is now oriented to existing structures. Uh, I would say a few words for the Americans because they, as usually, they are one step ahead. They all already use the more resilience. They have abandoned sustainability. So they have uh, uh, started up a program which is a resilience-based earthquake design for the next generation of buildings. They had uh, uh, see, seen with a critical eye what we are doing now, that the um, they found that even if we are, are uh, comply with uh, code requirements, uh, and if, uh, let's say, the, the design earthquake comes, the, the building will uh, suffer losses higher than 20% of the cost of its um, uh, replacement value. So this is not a good uh, target to, to put. So they are, uh, are questioning if our code targets are, I mean, worth to, to put. And uh, the second problem is if uh, our methods are reliable and what we expect on the, let's say, the, uh, the damage will come, uh, will happen, which uh, puts us the big question about models and modeling and uh, about real behavior of, of structures. So for the next years, uh, for these past years, we design according to our codes and we have also performance-based design trying to see if uh, we have to, uh, let's say, to we have demand to, to try to find which will be the, uh, in the response of, of, the, of the structure during an earthquake. We're trying to simulate what will happen to the, but we are not interested about the the whole construction, we are just speaking about the, the bearing structure and not all the architectural and mechanical parts. So non-structural uh, components are not on the interest of our uh, metho uh, computing methods now. So resilience-based design, which is the, what Americans propose, is uh, a holistic process which identifies and mitigates earthquake-included risks to enable swift recovery in the aftermath of major earthquakes. And this exceeds code intended performance objectives and typical performance-based design objectives. We have, uh, of course, uh, this will put the bar uh, higher than what we uh, demand now on our, uh, let's say, structural design. So uh, this is more or less what is happening uh, on uh, the new generation of uh, structural codes that to, have to come. As you know, the uh, uh, new generation of Eurocodes has proceeded, 
and we have already a first draft about the um, assessment and retrofitting of existing structures. There's a first draft already on, uh, I mean, on the web, on, on, on the, uh, let's say, to the, uh, to the people that to elaborate the, this uh, uh, standard. And uh, for the first time, it includes also uh, Bridges um, a chapter. For the first time, we have uh, something to say about uh, retrofitting existing bridge, bridges. So the problem is that uh, more or less 70% per, of uh, existing buildings and the majority of uh, European infrastructure is uh, uh, under the, uh, the, the today's uh, bar of uh, codes and uh, safety rules. Uh, these assets uh, is needs uh, an urgent uh, and retrofitting to, cheap, to keep their value and to be functional. This is um, a big problem that uh, Europe has to face. And the problem is that we don't see a really European policy about it. Uh, for the moment, uh, we don't have a European, uh, let's say, a program about retrofitting and uh, 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 keeping, uh, maintaining our infrastructure and buildings. And uh, this has to be faced in, during the, the, the years to come. And um, I am anxious see, looking that the next uh, multi-annual framework, uh, let's say uh, financial uh, program of, of Europe, does not uh, include any, any thoughts about uh, uh, some uh, real budget for maintaining the, uh, the functionality of I mean, infrastructure, because it is a European infrastructure. They are, co they are recognized of common interest, uh, a lot of roads and etc. But it, it is not a real European program to face all this um, situation. Uh, do we have rules? Yes, we have Euro codes. We have now uh, under, uh, let's say, the new one about retrofitting and assessment. And we have, of course, national and uh, special provisions for monuments, which is a big chapter also for structural engineers. And in most European countries, we have uh, special rules for bridges and especially railway ones. Uh, do we have priorities? No, I don't know that, uh, that uh, exists such a policy in a European, uh, some strategy of uh, how to face all this common interest infrastructure, and uh, even though no policy of aggrading the, the buildings. National strat uh, strategies, of course, exist, but uh, it is in, in most uh, countries there are uh, some, uh, let's say, um, rules about the vulnerability evaluation of buildings and some of them have some priorities uh, uh, at least for public uh, interest buildings. So the, uh, the Italians are the first to uh, make a practical and um, uh, not less uh, scientific um, uh, way of uh, um, evaluating the uh, vulnerability of existing structures, yes. and. Um, this is uh, now uh, what we are trying to do also in Greece. We are trying to, to, to promote all over Europe, which means that we have to have a common way of evaluating the, uh, uh, guideline, the seismic performance, uh, uh, the classification of uh, earthquake risk, so that we can build a strategy oriented to the case-to-case, uh, -case, uh, um, I mean, depending on its uh, urgency. The Americans has already started, although in, um, they have, uh, of course, it's the California state uh, which is uh, in front of all this uh, effort, and they have already, by law, uh, trying to um, stimulate uh, recover, um, upgrading of existing structures. The economic aspect, of course, it will be, uh, it's not only the life value that we are trying to, to protect, but it is a, a huge economic interest so that we uh, have a prevention on the, what uh, a, a big earthquake could uh, provoke. I mean, if we try to, to, to make the cost of uh, one day, cost of the general bridge collapse, it, we will be surprised by the numbers. And um, what we're trying to now to convince is that it's foolish to invest on energy efficiency measures on unsafe buildings. As you know, there is one 
program about energy efficiency and there are uh, money in uh, promotion all over the Europe just to upgrade the energy efficiency of buildings. We're trying to say that this is foolish unless you check first if this building is safe. So this is what we are trying to do in Eke and uh, I would want to communicate with you. Uh, this is not my personal point of view, it is uh, our uh, uh, our AK organization, uh, uh, it's a working team on, on that. And uh, I would say that we're not starting from nowhere. GSC and National, uh, let's say, uh, have a lot of work doing on existing structures and we have a, lot of, uh, a good base, scientific, to uh, try to, uh, let's say, convince that sh structural upgrade should come on the same way and first from the, uh, let's say, energy efficiency. And um, I think there are some measures to propose, but uh, I think we have, uh, I have taken your time. So the, the message was that it's nonsense to give money on, let's say, glading fa facades, etc., and ignoring what is happening inside the building. So thank you. Thank you.